Hello everyone. Today I'm going to give you an overview of the basic macros in Google Test. Last time I've shown you that expect equal will verify that 9 and the return value of st.pop are equal. In Google Test, there are a whole bunch of macros such as this one. Here I create a second test, test all. Test pop and test all belong to the same test case, stack test. Even though these two tests belong to the same test case, they are very independent from each other. So in test all, I cannot reuse this object that I created in test pop. I have to create a new new stack, st. Push 9, push 28, then I pop a value into the variable val. And here again, I use expect equal to verify that 28 is equal to val. Expect ne verify that val is not equal to 0. Expect gt verify that 29 is greater than val. Expect le verify that 27 is less than or equal to val. Expect true verify that this statement is true. These macros are called non-fatal assertion. If any of the assertion failed, the rest of the assertions will continue to be evaluated. And if an assertion failed, you can provide a customized message to be included in the report. Let's run the test. As you see, both tests has passed. Now let's create some uh, field condition. Let's change this to 24 and expect true. Let's expect this is not equal to 28. So we have created a two failed assertion and let's run it again. Okay, it's done. So there are two failures in line 20, which is of here. The value under check is val. Expected value is 24, but actually we get 28. In line 24, which is of here, the value under check is this. Expected to be true, but actually is false and this customized message is also printed out. So in the end, one test has passed, one test has failed. The failed test is called stacktest.testall, which is this one. So these are called non-fatal assertion. As you can imagine, every one of them has a corresponding Fatal assertion. Non-fatal assertion start with expect. Fatal assertion start with assert. Fatal assertion is different from non-fatal assertion in that if one assertion failed, then the rest of the current function will not be evaluated. The current function is test, so if this assertion failed, these will not be evaluated. These assertions can be used on the built-in types or the classes where the operator equal or greater than or less than is overloaded. There are some special macros for string. For string check, there's a macro expect string equal, which verifies these two strings are equal. And as you see, string check takes the parameter of C string, not C++ string. Expect string case equal is doing the same check, but it ignores case. Now let's talk about floating point. Floating point comparison is a little bit tricky due to the round of errors. 
if I have two variables, x and y, and if everything goes OK, x is supposed to equal to y, but this statement may not evaluate it to be true due to some uh, round-off error in computing x and y. So we cannot simply use this to check the equality of two floating variables. Google Test provides expect float equal, which verifies that these two floating variables are almost equal. Now the question is, how almost is almost? With Google Test, almost equal means they are within four ULPs from each other. ULP stands for unit in the last place, which basically is the smallest spacing between floating number variables. For example, if I have a float x, and y is the smallest float that is bigger than x, then one ULP equal to y minus x. So as long as these two variables are within four ULPs from each other, they are considered to be equal. And there's also a expect double equal, which compares two doubles. But sometimes you may not like Google's definition of almost equal. You want to define it by yourself. Then you can use expect near. This macro verifies that the difference between these two variables is less than 1. And as you might have guessed, each one of them has a corresponding fatal assertion, which start with assert, like these guys. So these are the basic macros that you can use in Google Test. Some people may ask, I've only seen the test functions. Where is the main function? Every executable should have a main function. The main function is actually in the Google Test library that we have compiled. Remember we have added two source files, gtest all and gtest main. The gtest main contains the main function. If we open it and scroll down, this is the main function. It calls init Google test and then call run all tests. This is another nice thing about Google test. This function will automatically search all the tests available and run them. So that you don't need to enumerate all the tests that you want to run. If you want the main function to be under your control, you can copy this function and put it in your test file and then remove this file from the Google test project. Now everything is under your control. You can do something before the test start. You can do something after the test finished. But the important thing is the main function should return the returned value from run all tests. That's all for today. Feel free to check out the other videos I have and see you next time.